Hey, I'm Steve Stedman, and welcome to this video on using the Waypoint mode with the Litchi app on the DJI Mini 2 drone. Uh, this Waypoint mode is kind of an autopilot, a way to pre-program in your route ahead of time, and then just tell the drone to go fly it. Uh, there's a number of options and different settings you can do, uh, but we'll be doing this with the DJI Mini 2 and uh, I know the Litchi app works with other uh, drones, but this is the only one I've got right now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start out by uh, getting everything set up, connected the phone to the controller, uh, and then we have the uh, Litchi app running. And what we're going to do is jump into the waypoint mode. You get that by clicking up in the top left of the screen. You get this uh, row of buttons and you click on the second one which is waypoint uh, once you click on waypoint uh, you can start by clicking on the screen and that will place different waypoints so you can see waypoint 2 flies to waypoint 3 and then flies to waypoint 4 and you can see the little light blue line kind of makes the curves there each waypoint has a different has a height associated with it and then once you've done you, you can save it so instead of going through and manually clicking all the waypoints right now, I'm going to reload uh, a previously set up uh, route. And the one we're going to use is called Marina because it flies over a local marina uh, and then returns home. So here's the route. There's uh, quite a few, something like 18 different points here. Shows the whole mission is about 15,000 feet and it's going to take about 10 minutes to fly. If you click on any of the waypoints, you can set the altitude for that waypoint, as well as the speed, curve size, things like that. And you can use the arrows at the bottom to jump forward and jump backwards, follow your waypoints uh, through the course. And there's the loop, goes around, and then back home. The way I've got it set up, it'll fly in. Uh, and return back to almost the starting point. Then I will usually manually land it uh, once we get to the end of the route. All right, let's get ready to fly. Recording started. All right, I've started recording the video. Uh, here we're going to hit the play button and tell it to start at waypoint one. It'll go up to the altitude of waypoint one at the takeoff position, and then it'll fly over uh, and start at waypoint one. A couple mile an hour wind today, but not too much. Uh, you can see that on waypoint one, it's got a black square with the number 45 above it or a rectangle. Uh, that shows the altitude. So waypoint one is at 45 feet. Uh, we take off out here flying over the water. Uh, we can see a small number there, the number of feet. That's how long that leg is uh, between the waypoints. And then we hit waypoint two, which is at 396 feet, I think. Slight turn and heading on to waypoint three at this point. Now, since I hit the takeoff button, I haven't touched anything else other than the tilt, gimbal tilt, which I just did there to look down a little bit on the camera. So, uh, for this entire route, I'm not going to control anything uh, other than uh, the tilt of the gimbal for the camera and maybe some zoom in, zoom out on the camera as well. And you can see as we approach waypoint three, uh, it's going to round the corner here to sort of smooth out that turn. So instead of going to a specific location and pivoting, uh, it's going to go and uh, curve the corner. And you can see that with a light blue curve that it shows around each of the corners. Uh, it just helps smooth out the entire flight a little bit uh, so you can better see or to get a smoother video when you're filming. So when it's flying, I'm really doing nothing at this point because everything's pre-programmed, nothing other than uh, I can start and stop the camera or the video. I can change it and take pictures, stills instead of uh, video. I can tilt the camera, tilt the gimbal. Uh, now there's a different mode you can set it up and this flight isn't actually set to that. But this flight is set to keep the camera pointed forward always towards that next location uh, where there's an option that you can say 
uh, user controlled. And what happens with that is it always flies in, towards the next location, but you can spin the drone in 360 degrees around and film in any direction you want. So for instance, if you're going to do a flyby somewhere and you wanted to be looking to the right or the left or even behind you, uh, you could put this in the mode where you have full control over the camera. But to keep this one simple, uh, we're just going to let it fly. Now at this point, uh, it's all running. I could go make a cup of coffee, go use the restroom, do whatever I need to do, uh, and then uh, come back in about seven or eight minutes and the drone should have done the loop and ended up back uh, at uh, the final destination point, which I think is waypoint 18 or 19 there on the list. But as we're going through here, uh, if something happens, like we're flying along here and you think, oh, there's something interesting, I want to take a picture of that, you could just pause uh, the route, spin the drone around a little bit, take some pictures, maybe uh, uh, shoot a different video, and then resume where you were flying. So you can be going along just fine, uh, pause the route, uh, resume it, and uh, get back on track. Now, if something happens, like maybe your route's too far or you lose signal for a minute, uh, and it will abort the route and do your normal lost signal thing, which is usually like return to home or something like that. Uh, but if it starts doing that and then you get control of it again and you realize, oh, I'm close to this waypoint, you can just say uh, resume this mission and pick it up at waypoint number nine, for instance, if that's the waypoint that we're approaching next. Uh, but at this point, I mean, it is purely remote controlled. Uh, each waypoint has an elevation. Uh, you can control the speed, different speeds between each of the waypoints. Like let's say I wanted to, uh, on this lake we're approaching in front of us, there's a fountain in it. Let's say I wanted to slow down as I flew by the fountain. Uh, you could do that. You just set a waypoint there and then say the speed from here to the next waypoint is uh, significantly slower or different from what the waypoint or what the speed was between the previous waypoints. Here we're flying the loop, and we should be uh, getting to the point we're going to turn soon and head towards home. Now, the first couple of times that I put together a route like this, which the Litchi app calls a mission, I was a little bit afraid to go too far because I wasn't sure what was going to happen. So I do short mission, maybe half mile out and half mile back and do a few turns. But uh, it's pretty cool what you can do. I mean, I've done missions that have flown... I tried to fly three miles out, and that's in another video, but uh, it was only go two and a half miles, and then I had to take manual control for that last half mile. Uh, but uh, I've been able to do some really fun stuff with flying missions, like 4th of July with fireworks going off. Uh, we had it set up to fly up and down the bay and take pictures of uh, all kinds of fireworks being blown off at different locations. Uh, here it's hit the corner. It's kind of rounding the corner a bit, and uh, we're at going from 108 feet up to I think 300 and some feet there. I'm just taking a look here. One of the things you can do uh, when you're underway is if you use the function key and then the right wheel that you normally would tilt your gimbal with, uh, that will allow you to zoom and zoom in on a specific location. And here I've zoomed in on the beach with this little boat that's washed ashore there. And then you can zoom back out and get the wider perspective by using the function key and then using that roller wheel in a different direction. And we should be making the last turn here that kind of points us back towards our original location. Uh, point 13 is going to head us south. And what's nice with this is if you want to go out and film somewhere for whatever reason it is, uh, you can set it up to fly over, fly either fly high or fly over less populated areas. So like here, as I flew over the canal or the waterway going up, and now I'm flying over the bay coming back, uh, I'm not flying directly over people's houses. So it's a little bit uh, less obtrusive, less annoying that way. So we can look down at the bottom. We can see our altitude is currently 390 feet. Uh, our distance away from our destination is 4,000 feet, just over 4,000. And we're currently traveling at 24 miles an hour. And then that second miles per hour, which says zero miles per hour, that's showing how fast we're either ascending or descending, which isn't very much right now. So uh, about 3,300 feet away, 
from home and you can see the altitude this waypoint 14 is at 396 feet and then uh, waypoint 15 is going to be at 262 feet uh, of elevation so you'll see you hit that point and then it starts descending after that when i'm going some distance to get somewhere i like to just fly the drone high uh, so that it's not like buzzing right over people's heads and annoying them just to be a little bit more polite there so here you'll see that uh, we're traveling at 25 miles per hour, but we're descending at one mile per hour. So our altitude is dropping as we approach this next waypoint at 262 feet. And then waypoint 16 is way down low at 19 feet as we get in close. And uh, that's 19 feet above sea level. And since the tide's out a little bit, uh, the water level is actually a little bit below that right now. So waypoint 15, and you can see that blue curve that it's drawn there. You can adjust those curves, and depending on how sharp of an angle you're at, you can have it curve over a larger area or curve over a shorter area. But still, since the time I hit the play button to take off, I have done nothing to control this flight. I've only controlled what the camera tilt and camera zoom has done. So here we go, coming in, uh, descending at four miles an hour now. So coming down fairly rapidly, uh, headed towards 19 feet. And then we'll make that last corner head towards home. And what I've done is that final waypoint, position 18, I've tried to position that as close to my landing pad. So you can see there's the house with the flags on it. Uh, my landing pad is up on the top right corner of the deck there. So we're going to come in close. Wow, we came in pretty quick there. Uh, we're going to hit waypoint 18, and that's right there at 13 feet. So it's basically hovering just a few feet away from my landing pad. Recording stopped. And there we go. That wraps up that mission. I've stopped the recording, and now all I have to do is just fly it into the landing pad and land it. Now, there are settings that you can do with your mission to tell it to come back and land automatically. Uh, so you wouldn't even have to take care of the landing yourself. But because of this little perch that I land on on the corner of my deck, I like to bring it in manually uh, to avoid any kind of possible crashing or things like that. Uh, next, we're going to take a look at some of the settings. What I've done is I've clicked on waypoint one, and then I hit the left arrow, which took me back to the mission settings. You could also get that with a little gear icon on the left screen. So here you can change your heading mode uh, and or your finish action, path mode, Cruising speed, flight speed, photo capture. I haven't actually used the photo capture yet because I've always just shot video when I fly, but you can set it to take a picture every so many seconds. Uh, your default curve size, and then you can do things like change the gimbal pitch and the rotational direction of the, uh, of the drone as well. Anyway, uh, that wraps it up. Uh, take, just taking a quick look here at the waypoint settings. Probably going to move waypoint 18. I moved a little bit lower. And then I'm going to drag it a little bit over closer to my landing pad and then hit save. So now that flight has been saved. I can reuse it again. I've done a minor adjustment at the end. I hit the lock button on it and then saved it again to make sure it's locked when I saved it so you don't, don't actually accidentally move things. And then we'll stop the recorder at that point. Well, that wraps up this quick tutorial on using the DJI Mini 2 with the Waypoint mode on the Litchi app. Uh, the Litchi app is just one of those things that adds a whole lot of value uh, over the DJI app, and it just makes it uh, gives it a lot more capability. It makes it a lot more fun to fly the drone. So if you like this video, please uh, smash that like button and uh, check out some of my other videos as well. All right, that wraps things up. Have a great day.